Hello, my name is Emil. Welcome to Book Talk. Today we're discussing the first book in Lisa McMahon's Wake trilogy, and it's called Wake. So, you ask what is Wake all about? If you haven't read Wake, Wake is about a high school student named Janie Hannigan. She's 17 years old. Ever since she was 8 years old, she has been uncontrollably drawn into other people's dreams. But it is not until she befriends an elderly nursing home patient and becomes involved with an enigmatic fellow student that she discovers her true power. So basically she gets stuck in people's dreams. This is like a curse for her. She can't tell anybody what she does. She never believe her or worse, they think she's a freak. So Janie lives on the fringe, cursed with an ability she doesn't want and can control, which really sucks for her. I'm sorry, Janie. Then she falls into a gruesome nightmare, one that shows her to her bone. That's not good, I guess. For the first time, Janie is more than a witness to someone else's twisted psyche. She is a participant. Oh dear. That's not good for poor old Janie here. Last part of it says, not all dreams are sweet. Why aren't all dreams sweet? I went to this book knowing that it was about a girl who got sucked into dreams. I read the first few pages of it a couple of years back. Cassandra Clare actually says it's a lyrical Shutterston novel whose images linger with you long after you've turned the last page. Like the most haunting of dreams. Cassandra Clare, New York Times best-selling author of City of Bones. I think this is the only book which cast Claire reviewed that I didn't enjoy. I didn't even know she reviewed it until I picked up again to do this book talk. If you trust her instincts, venture into the world of Janie. By the way, guys, it's a pillow in case you can see. It's a pillow because it's weak. Anyway, so if you haven't read the book and you're interested in Janie here getting sucked into dreams, then I suggest you pick it up. If you read it, continue with spoiler section. Buy non spoilery people. Because if you want to read it and you don't want to be spoiled, I don't recommend you stay for this, okay? Bye now. Bye. Okay, let's start with the spoilers. First thing I really noticed was that this was like a diary entry. That got a little bit confusing when it was in third person. And then sometimes they were like the I, the certain like first person narrative. That got a little bit confusing for me, honestly. And it was sometimes really annoying me because that just didn't appeal to me as, you know, other books either. All of them are in third person, or all of them in first person. They don't have this switch, and yeah, I, I didn't like that. What did interest me, though, was Caleb, not Cable. I was thinking Caleb from Divergent, not Cable. <laughs> Sorry, it is Cable. Cable, Cable, Cable. Cable. He was odd, and the mysterious loner guy, who eventually, as we know, ends up to be her boyfriend. I liked his dream, because that was really interesting to me. Lisa McMahon, the detail she used there was really vivid. Let's try and find it. <clears throat> From around the corner comes a hulking, monstrous figure outlined by the moonlight. It thrashes its arms and lifts its hand to the sky, letting out a horrible yell. Janie can feel her fingers going numb. This is one of the parts that annoy me. She tries to get out, but she can't. Choppy. The figure's long fingers God, that's a little bit tongue twister, glint in the moonlight. Janie leans back against the barn. She is shaking. The grotesque figure sharpens his knife fingers on each other. The sound is deafening. Janie, against the barn, squeaks. Figure wheels around. He sees her. Approaches her. Approaches her isn't even a sentence. She has seen this character before. I like the description. The rest of the dream I was like, okay. No. But that dream he had kind of freaked me out. He's not actually involved with some, like, drug lord problem going on. But he's actually some undercover cop. An undercover cop at the age of 18. That's realistic. Well, I guess it is, but it's odd. Their relationship breaks up, and their relationship comes back together, and their relationship breaks, and their relationship comes back together. That's a little bit tedious in the book. You have at least maybe one breakup per book and not like five. That'd be great. Thanks. Shay? Shay just sucked. I didn't like Shay. Oh, nobody likes Shay, especially not Jamie, who basically thought that Shay and Cable we're together, and then they turn out not to be, hence why I have to make the dream thing, uh. At least he was able to communicate with her. That was great. But, I mean, how else would you communicate with her if she was being all stubborn, right? He learns how to control his dream so that he can communicate with Janie. I find that kind of odd because I know you can do that, but in order to do that, I'm pretty sure you need to have more than, like, three days or three weeks or whatever he had. And he's like, oh, I learned, I read through these books, and blah, blah, blah. No, not that interesting, honestly. I did like when they came to Canada, though, because Canadian. Captain, I liked her. She was a boss woman. You know, she was she was powerful. She was cool, which is great, because not a lot of people apparently have authority. So, 
Yay for us. Captain comes in, closes the door. These are a lot of choppy sentences in this book. That was another pet peeve of mine. I was really about the choppy sentences. I just wasn't a big fan of them. Captain comes in, she closes the door. We really need to make that two choppy sentences. It's like the captain came in her in her office, shutting the door behind her. Easy to do that. But no. The captain understands their teenage love because, you know, if Cable can't work, then, oh, well, that's really too bad for her because she's, like, the best she's had on the job, and that was, eh. I like Mrs. Steuben, or whatever her name was, Mrs. Steuben, Steuben, whatever. And I like the fact that we actually found out she was a dream catcher. I was wondering, oh, is there any other dream catchers? And we find out that there is, so, yeah. But she died, so that really sucked. She taught Janie how to control the dream slash how to help people, which is great because Janie, when she's going into those dreams, was paralyzed and she feel nauseous and things would happen. So that would just suck a lot. But once once she was able to teach Janie sort of what to do, then that was great for Janie. Yay. I found Janie's mom, who was actually a, an alcoholic who was drunk all the time. We barely saw her, except for like that one time. I found her pretty cool. She kind of never came up to her room, so Janie actually had privacy to herself, which is great because if Janie didn't have privacy to herself, she would keep getting her mom's dreams. That would drive her nuts, and she wouldn't be able to go and do her work and get her scholarships and whatever. There wasn't a lot of characters in here. There were her two best friends. Well, there was the, there was a girl whose brother drowned. That was one of Janie's best friends, and then she finally asked the girl, I believe her name was like Melinda or something, about the dream, and you know, we found out that her brother actually got eaten by a shark or eaten by something in some lakes or something. So I, I found that pretty sad. Drug Lord Daddy person guy got caught. I was like, yeah, good job, Janie. You actually got something. But then when she got the dream about where the drugs were, she hit her head on the trolley. I was like, oh, okay. An exam, like four hours later, I was like, oh, okay. Janie became the hero of the story, which kind of annoyed me. The story it annoyed me, not Janie. Then she got some scholarship, and she helped find the drugs and some life jackets. Who would have ever thought of life jackets for drugs? So that was pretty creative, I have to admit. That, that was pretty good. She becomes Save the Hero Day. I want to see more of Mrs. Steuben in the next book, if she actually can appear in Janie's dreams, which would be great. Now that Janie can actually help people in their dreams, that's good for her, because then she can be less burdened down with her dreams. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna read Fade. So we're going over here, Fade. Fade. Ready? Fade. At least my hand. Borrowed it, so obviously I am gonna read it and try out the series and really hope it gets better because I was expecting more. The idea seems so interesting, but it just wasn't put right into words with the diary context and third person coming to first person and just the choppy sentences and everything. Like, yeah. I'm not really sure what to think of this book, honestly. Didn't like it. I mean, I liked it to a certain extent, hence why I'm reading both the second one, but not enough to keep me that intrigued, you know? Like, I'm just continuing the series because it is a series, and I want to know what happens next. I like the happy ending. If you don't have a happy ending, well, that's just kind of sad. So that was great. I give this about... 60? I rated it three stars in Goodreads for me personally. Maybe if you liked it, it doesn't deserve the three stars. Share your thoughts on the book down below in the comments. And I think that's about it for today. I'm Amal. I'll talk to you later. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!